Hello everyone and welcome back to Asian Nagash which is of course a channel dedicated to Age of Sigma and in this video we are going to be continuing my long in-depth army series on the Soulblight Gravelords and in this video we're going to be talking all things skeletons as in the death rattle for my part 4 of this series. And if this is the first video of this series that you're watching, I strongly recommend you go back to part one because the way that we are reviewing this book is the same as we did for Slaves of Darkness, Flesh Eater Courts, Night Haunt, Beasts of Chaos, Maggot King of Nurgle, Gloons by Gits, and all the other Long and Death Army series are done where we're going to be reviewing this book from the front to the back. So I have already done a lore video so you can go check that out and in the first part of this we covered allegiance abilities, the second part of the video we covered sub allegiance abilities, those sub factions, dynasties and legions and then in the last video we covered the dead walkers, so the zombies and this one like I say the death rattle. If you want to give yourself a bit of a head start on my thoughts on Soul Black Grave Lords, I have already done a why play video for them. If you're still wondering if this is an army that you want to play before you watch this long in depth series like I say. And when you're watching this video and if you've got quite a bit of experience with the Soulblight Gravelords and there's anything that you think I've missed out, make sure you put that down in the comments below. It's not just going to be me who learns from it, it's going to be everyone watching this video and trying to make the most of their army as much as they can and you can help them with that. And alternatively, if you are new to Soulblight Gravelords and you've got a question you would like to ask, put it down in the comments below and I'll be happy to try and help you best I can. As Soulblight Gravelords is an army that I actually play, that means it's an army that I actually have quite a bit of experience with so I can help you out best I can compared to some of the armies that I don't play but I still try and help you this army I should be able to answer your questions if you do have them and just bear in mind that this video is all about death rattles so if you're going to ask me a question about dead walker zombies or something make sure to put it on the video that is relevant for that so in that case it would be the dead walker video just to keep things all nice and organized and then the last thing I want to say guys if you do enjoy this video make sure you do something that's completely free and really helps out the channel that's smash the like button smash the subscribe button and smash that bell button I know I always repeat that, but essentially it's really easy for you guys to do. I do this to try and help you out, and that helps out the channel, and it's free. And if you would like to support the channel a step further, I have got a YouTube membership where you can join and support the channel, or well, there's a link to my Patreon in the top of the description down below. But we can get into all of that at the end of the video. And the first thing we're going to start with is going to be the Death Rattle Skeletons. And you'll see when I am reviewing these War Scrolls, I will be talking a bit about the lore of each unit before I go into the rules, because for me, the lore of the units, the game, etc., whatever army you're playing, is going to be just as important to me as their rules, because I do play a lot of my games like narratively, so I always think it's important to see how the law is reflected in the rules of the unit. And we're going to start with the Death Rattle Skeletons, as I like to sort of make our way up in kind of power level, or how you think the model would look power level that way, and then we'll be doing like the White Kings, the heroes at the end. But like I say, starting with a bit of lore, the Death Rattle Legions are marching in relentless unity, their fleshless hands clutching rusted weapons, the Death Rattle Legions advance with grim, unstoppable purpose. These skeletal hosts are the remnants of bygone ages risen through the power of necromancy and chained to the will of their undying monarchs. Deathless skeleton warriors form the core of many soul blight hosts, for there are countless corpses buried beneath the crust of the realms, waiting to be raised once more. Clutching corroded weapons and mustering beneath faded banners, they advance in a tireless lockstep, a host of clattering bone marching with terrifying purpose. Those skeletons are not the most fearsome of warriors individually. Their utter lack of mercy sees them swarm over the foe in a vast tide, stabbing and hacking without thought for their own protection. The terror unleashed after witnessing ranks upon ranks of grinning skeletons at war is a weapon in itself, for only the most courageous can hold their nerve when confronted with such a stark manifestation of their own mortality. And now talking about them in the game, so they're going to cost you 85 points for a minimized size unit of 10. And they are battle line. So what that means is that they are actually your cheapest way to put battle line in the army. And when I say that, 
Obviously, if you look at, you know, Dead Walker Zombies, you go, well, you get 20 of them for 115 points, so they're cheaper per model. But if you just literally want to have the cheapest battle line in your army, so you can have Nagash, you can have Vampire Lord and Zombie Dragons in your army, etc., then the Skeletons are going to be the cheapest way to do it as an option. But obviously, take them in a greater number, they're more effectiveness as an actual unit, if you want them to be that, rather than just taking them for battle line's sake. And then going on to their War Scroll, they have a 4-inch movement, they have a 5-plus save, they have a Bravery of 10, and they have one wound. So, the 5 plus save is actually quite good because it used to be a 6 plus save, but their shield gave them a plus 1 to their save if the enemy didn't have any rent. So what you found is you either had a 5 up save or you had no save. And what that means is that just a flat out 5 up save is just a hell of a lot better than if the enemy doesn't have any renders of 5 up save. So yeah, I like that. That's a good change there. 4 inch move, 1 wound, bravery 10. It's what we come to expect at the end of the day. Going on to the description, it says a unit of Death Raptor Skeletons has any number of models, each armed with an ancient blade or spear. And then the champion is actually can be armed with a mace or a hellbird, which is something you're going to do because it's just flat out a better weapon and we'll get into that now. So the meta weapons and this is actually something very important to mention because if you are a Legions of Nagash player you're going to be thinking well you know do I go blades with my skeletons i.e. do I give them swords or do I give them spears there's trade off on both ends it used to be plus one to hit with the sword but you used to get that extra one inch range with the spear what do I do now it's just made simplified but they've done a few things like that with some of the older models shall we say I think Liberators had the same sort of deal where they just combine the weapon options and that's because for the skeletons it's an ancient blade or spear which is a one inch range a one attack threes and fours no rend and one damage so although you no longer have that two inch range option which is a shame but what i will say is that this i think is just flat out better because even the sword so the blade used to be hitting on a four and the spear used to be hitting on a five so flat out a three plus is great or right, attack on them if you want to hit on twos right so that's fantastic uh four to wound that was the same before like i say no random one damage and then the champion's mace or halberd is one inch range two attacks freeze and freeze no random one damage you're gonna do it because it's an extra attack and it wounds on a three rather than wounding on a four and I quite like the change of weapon options. At first I was a little bit unsure and I was like, oh that's a shame really, it sort of like takes away options literally doesn't it? But for me, because I have something like 30 odd broken skeletons that I need to fix up somehow, even though I know skeletons you can get away with them looking a bit broken because they are skeletons at the end of the day, these ones need some serious repair. So out of the ones I actually have, you know, made, I have about... Um, 70 I would say and there's probably about 30 spears and about 40 with swords and as that's quite a bit of an odd number what I like to do is just be able to now I can mix them up so it's not a problem if there's a spear guy standing next to a sword guy it all in the rules makes sense anyway um, so yeah going on to the next things we're going to talk about which is a standard bear and this is a one in ten models in this model can be a standard bear you can re-roll rolls of one for the Deathless Minden battle trait for this unit, while it has any standard bearers, so that means you've got a 6 up re rolling ones for your after save. So, these guys, let's say you really want to make them defensively, chuck a Mystic Shield on them, they've got a 4 up save, now they've got a 6 up death save re rolling ones. So, you know, not bad for something that you think would just be wiped off the board really easily. And then going on to their actual proper ability is going to be the Skeleton Legion. Though slow in their approach, these undead warriors rise to rejoin the fight time and time again in spite of their losses. So when you pick this unit to fight, roll a dice for each model in this unit that was slain in that phase. On a 4 plus, you can return that model to this unit. So this is a great example of when you're thinking about, oh, what do I fight was first on the table? Let's say you've got a block of zombies and you've got a block of uh, Death Row Skeletons in combat. Depending, obviously, the situation, because there's always lots of different situations in there and Age of Sigma and what you need to attack with first. But just flat out, you know, if the situation is equal for both those units, you attack with the zombies first, let them do their damage. And then when the enemy hits you back and wipes out, I don't know, let's say you've got a unit of 20 Skeletons. And then wipe out, what, 10 of them, let's say. you got 10 left. When you go to fight back, you roll 10 dice on a 4-up. One of those dead skeletons comes back. So that means that you should get 5 back. And then that means that you've actually done 
better that round compared to if you were to go with the skeletons first then the zombies die and then there's not really much benefit for the zombies attacking second. So it's nice to actually have a unit that attacks last essentially, but there is a benefit to it, right? There's a reason to do it and not just, I like that unit the least, it's going to die and take some casualties. You get to raise those casualties back out of the ground again. And there's also a point to make there where I gave the situation of like, uh, do you attack your zombies first of them? If there's like lots of conflicts going on, and there are multiple things that could attack your death rattle skeletons, like your block of death rattle skeletons is in combat with three enemy units. Let them attack you first with all of their units, because then that's just going to give you more casualties for your death rattle skeleton unit. That means that there's more dice for you to roll before you attack. Let's say uh, the enemy attacks you with one of their three units into the death rattle skeletons, that combat phase, and you attack straight away with the death rattle skeletons. Right, well. You'll be bringing back some models probably, but then when it comes to the next attack from the other two enemy units, there's not going to be a way for you to be able to bring back those casualties that are sustained from those attacks. So wait until the end. An interesting note I do want to add on to the end of that though is when we look at the Necromancer, which is going to be in the, probably the next video, which will be about Death Mages, um, they do have a spell called uh, Van Hell's Dance Macabre. And what that means is that basically you can make a skeleton unit as one of the eligible units from that spell be able to fight and attack twice in the combat phase and what that might mean is that you might have a second chance in trying to regenerate these casualties that you have sustained from this phase now to be absolutely honest with you i think that's a conversation we have with your opponent if that's how it works i think just reading it off and i can't see anything in the faq to me it sounds like you get two chances of bringing back your guys if you do that spell um, because you're activating them again and it doesn't say that you can't do this ability twice right you can't do the skeleton legion ability twice and you've had to put a spell into them and stuff to do it so it's not just like a guarantee auto but if you can do that um yeah lots of good chances of you regenerating those models for absolute sure so that's definitely something to bear in mind there and if you guys do know the answer to that question obviously you put that down in the comments below and be interested here and then going on to the keywords we have a death soul blight Grave Lords, Death Rattle Sumble, and Death Rattle Skeleton. So my overall thoughts on these guys, um, I think they've definitely got better than how they were before in uh, Legions of the Gash. I knew that basically, obviously with swords, they have a four plus to hit. And then if there was a Death Hero nearby, when well, I think nearby, I think it was 18 inches, so a huge range there. Are you an extra plus one to hit? So really a lot of the time you're freeze to hit anyway if you went with blades. But here, bear in mind if that was still the case, you can't have more than plus one to your hit. So really this is better because you can still put well attack on them. I would see these guys as a not as offensive as the zombies. And the reason why I say that, although they're hitting and you know wounded in general is you know better than the zombies, probably more reliable damage, the zombies have that mortal wound potential. So I would see these guys maybe more as a screen. To be honest with you, there are ways to buff their attacks, to get more attacks. You can do stuff to make them more offensive, but I think, to be honest with you, these guys are more defensive, more like screening sort of units. When we go on to the next unit, which is going to be the Grave Guard, they are going to be your offensive output. But the Death Row Skeletons, you know, they're not bad at throwing a few punches. Why I like them is because they have got that Skeleton Legion ability, so you've got that unit that is good to fight with at the end of the phase, rather than you just thinking, who's going to have to take the sacrifice this turn for the rest of the team? Uh, Death Row Skeletons do that generally good anyway. So yeah, Death Row Skeletons have got better than Legion of the Gash. Um, quite good in the fight if you buff them with things like Manhale's Dance, Command Abilities, everything else. So let's have a think about that. So let's say we're going to put Manfred in your list, we're going to put a Vampire Lord in your list, and we're going to put a White King in your list. And I know this is a lot of different ones, and why not? We chuck in a Necromancer in there as well. So what that would mean, if you really wanted to make the most out of the offensive abilities of your skeletons, and bear in mind, this is just one thing on the top of my head, put those in your list. That'll make your um, Vampire Lord be able to do its command ability onto your skeletons, making them have two attacks each. Manfred's command ability will be able to make them have plus one to hit and plus one to wound. So now they have two attacks, hit on twos, wounded on threes. And then if you have a White King in your list, his command ability is letting them re-roll ones to hit, which we'll get to later in this video. But what that means is that now you have a unit that has two attacks each, hit on two to roll ones, wound on a freeze, and with that Necromancer in your list, if you get that Manhouse Dance Macabre spell off, what that means is your skeletons 
are attacking twice. And like I say, I'm not really too sure. I couldn't really find it in the FAQ, but that might mean that you get to bring more back during that combat phase as well via their Skeleton Legion ability. So that just shows some aspect of how you can make them offensively. But overall, I think they are a defensive unit, but there are options to make them chuck out quite a lot of attacks. Again, you know, it's low quality attacks in the terms of no rend, you know, one damage. But dice are dice at the end of the day, and you swamp your opponent with save dice. Doesn't matter if they have a free up save, they will soon die. Um, but yeah, that's Death Row Skeletons. Also want to say that they are fantastic new models. Some of them, I think, look like they're doing a bit of a hula hoop dance, but apart from that, I think they're very nice. And um, I don't actually own any of these. I own loads and loads of the, don't want to call them old ones, but let's say the last style ones, so like vampire count ones. And I think they're just fine. If you've got those sort of ones and you're wondering, oh, do I have to, you know, get the new skeletons to the thing? Absolutely not. The um, ones before these skeletons, absolutely fine. I've got over 100 of these. I'm not buying anymore unless I see them at a really good price because the old ones I've got, I think are absolutely fine. Um, and also these do make the Graveguard look a bit less superior, which is a little bit interesting that they didn't get new Graveguard models, but maybe that's something we'll see in the future. Anyway, I digress. So that is the Death Row Skeletons, and I do like them quite a bit. So the next unit we're going to look at, it's going to be a little bit different, and that's because it's going to be a Underworlds Warband, and this is going to be the Serpical Guard, I believe it's pronounced, and this is important to review now, as I think the closest thing you can compare them to are Death Rattle Skeletons. Again, they are different. You can only take a unit of one of them, and you know they are unique and everything else, but I think it's definitely still worth reviewing, and some of the warbands can be quite useful. So a little bit of lore before we go straight into the rules, and the only lore I can find for them is off the War Scroll, so it won't be very long. The Serpical Guard hunt the mirrored city of Shadespire, cursed by Nagash to fully appreciate their horror. Led by the Serpical Warden, the former Lord Marshal of the city, they fall upon and slay intruders with an unsettling swiftness. So they are 80 points for 7. Bear in mind that they are unique, and that means that you can't start stacking them on top of each other or anything like that. You can't reinforce them, basically. They're unique. They come as 7. They can't take any artifacts, command traits. Not that they really would anyway. And um, they are not battle line as well. So that's something that the Death Row Skeletons do have over them, is that they are battle line at the end of the day. And as they are, I believe we said, 10 for 85 points, Death Row Skeletons are actually, for points per model, cheaper than the Serpical Guard, if you're looking at it as just like a cheap sort of screening unit or something. But going on to the Serpical Guard War Scroll is, again, different to the Death Row Skeletons. So we have the description, which is very long, and it is important to read out because it does explain what this unit is. So the Serpical Guard is a unit that has seven models, the Sepulchral Warden is armed with an ancient spear. The Prince of Dust is armed with an ancient mace. The Champion is armed with an ancient great blade. The Harvester is armed with an ancient scythe. And the three um, normal standard skeletons, can't read that word, are each armed with an ancient blade. Okay, so you might be thinking, oh, but what? who's the Prince of Dust and whatever? You can basically kind of guess by whatever weapon they give. And if you still don't know, uh, when you get the box of these guys, you know, in the instructions, it'll tell you. So don't worry about that. Um, but going on to the stat wheel. So we've got a 4-inch movement. We've got a 6 plus save, bravery 10, and 1 wound. But bear in mind that the Circle Warden, so, you know, the leader with his spear and his shield, he is going to have a wounds characteristic of 2, not 1. So he's a bit tougher because he's like the hero of these guys. Um, then going on to the meta weapons, you get all of these. But bear in mind, like, there might just be one model that gets them. So the Ancient Spear, so the leader, is 2 inch range, 3 attacks, 4s and 3s, no rend, 1 damage. The Ancient Mace is a 1 inch range, 2 attacks, 4s and 3s, no rend and 1 damage. The Ancient Great Blade is a 1 inch range, 2 attacks, 4s and 4s, minus 1 rend and 1 damage. And then the Ancient Scythe is a 1 inch range, uh, 1 attack, 4s to hit, 3s to wound, no rend and 2 damage. And the Ancient Blade, which are used by the normal ones, is a 1 inch range, 1 attack, 4s and 4s, no rend and one damage. So the attacks aren't great, but there's quite a few of them. In, like, these guys are all attacking, obviously, they all got in, which is, shouldn't be that difficult. 11 attacks, I believe, which isn't bad from seven models, but you know, again, these guys are not made for their attacking capability. And then going on to their abilities. So it says, frightening speed. So you can uh, reroll charge rolls for this unit, just flat out, that is good. Again, not really looking at this unit as being really offensively, but maybe charging the end of an enemy unit or something just to try and tag them, to try and sort of like guarantee 
that charge. Thinking if you were to put these guys in a Legion of Night where they can come on the board edge, and then that means it's just going to help them get that nine inch charge you could do. Um, then going on to the next and last ability we have is Serve in Death. So if the unmodified hit roll for an attack made by this unit is a six, that attack scores two hits on the target instead of one. Make a wound and save roll for each hit. So because we're checking out quite a few attacks, chances are you're going to roll some sixes and it's going to be more than what do we say 11 attacks to seven models, which you know isn't bad. Um, what I would say though is um, something else just to quickly mention as well that I missed out. So the warden is he's got two wounds, but at the start of your hero phase, if this model is on the battlefield, you can turn D3 slain models to this unit, which is pretty good because the skeletons uh, lost that ability a while ago and there are lesser ways now to bring back models. So the fact that these guys are regenerating, I think they're quite good. I mean, I just want to go onto the keywords before I give you my overall sort of thoughts. Um, but, so we've got Death, Soul Blight, Grave Lords, uh, Death Rattle, Death Rattle Skeletons, and the Serpent Guard. Um, interesting that they are Death Rattle Skeletons as well, the keyword there in case it is useful at some point. But my rule for these guys is I don't think they're terrible. <laughs> and um, that's generally quite a good thing to say about a, like a Wham Underworlds Warband in Age Sigma, because usually they're not very good. But I think these guys could be useful as back objective um, holders. If you've got these guys on the back objective, something like that, and the enemy sort of like sprinkling some fire at them, you're just going to be healing those D3 wounds all the time because your warden's going to be the last one to die and he brings them back, obviously. So I think they're good for that. The tiny enemy units, they've got that reroll charge, which is good. You're not using these guys for the same reason as if you were to take, you know, blocks of skeletons, obviously, because these are just seven guys that are going to die pretty easily. They've only got a six up save. Obviously, another six up save for Death's Minions, so you can put um, Mystic Shield or whatever on them as well to give them that five up initial save that you wanted to. But I think these guys have a purpose. If you were to ask me, are they the best thing to spend your points on if you're building a competitive list for Soul Black Grave Lords? No. Spend the points you're going to spend on these guys on something else. But they are fantastic models, great sculpts, and if you do want to play quite competitively, you go, oh, I don't really think these guys are going to fit in the list, but you're going to take Death Row Skins. Just fill some of these models in the Death Row Skeleton Legions, just, you know, as a unit champion or something, just make it a bit more interesting, I think, for sure. And um, I think with a little bit of kit bashing, the Circle Warden could be used as a cool White King if you wanted to go that route as well for a bit of, you know, creative conversion kit bashing capabilities and everything. Make your models your own at the end of the day. But like I say, for myself, I'm not playing competitively cutthroat. Every single point's got to count. And I'm gonna I'm playing more sort of like narrative and basically more for fun these days. And I would say the Serpent Guard I'll put on my list. However, I have already bought the Serpent Guard and already started building half the kit for kit bashes elsewhere in the model. So I won't be doing that. But some fantastic models in that. And um, at the end of the day, not a terrible unit. It has got a use, but there probably are better things in the army that can do that use. Like we were saying before, die walls are fantastic, the tiny enemy up screening. They're pretty goddamn cheap for what they do. Um, the Circle Guard maybe fall in between the gaps compared to other units that do their job better. Now moving on to something much, much more elite is going to be the Grave Guard. So they obviously are very popular in Age of Sigma for Soul Black Grave Lords, as they are particularly good and they have a nice, good, strong competitive war scroll, which we'll get to in a moment, just after a bit of their lore, just so we know who we're really talking about. So the elite champions of the House Carls of Death Rattle Kingdoms. Bands of Graveguard can be found wherever the White King stride. In life, each of these skeletal Praetorians numbered amongst not only the most deadly warriors in service to their lords, but also the most trusted. Many laid down their lives in service to their nation's rulers or swore oaths of eternal service. Packs that in Shaish and those lands that have felt its chills influence were taken most literally. Great graveyards and well warded barrows were constructed to house the remains of these honoured bound warriors when their kings and emperors were resurrected as undead rites. So too were the graveguard. Still they serve to protect their lieges and carry out their will. And it is often the Grave Guard who form the immovable anchor of a death rattle battle line, their ruthless skill honed over centuries of bitter warfare. And that is some lore for the Grave Guard, and obviously a lot of talk about there about saying how they serve the Death Rattle Kingdom and stuff. Obviously, 
said vampires and stuff, of course. But then looking at them on a gameplay perspective, now that we know who they are and actually why they're really pretty damn cool, we're going to be firstly talking about their points. So obviously they're not unique or anything like that, like the Serpical Guard, but they are battle line if you have a White King as a general. Now, without that, they are not battle line in Legions and the Gash, if you're used to that, and Grand Hosts and the Gash, which there isn't anymore, but in that, uh, they were battle line in that. Now, there's not really a really easy way to make them battle line unless you want to make a White King in general. However, what I will say, usually when you go, oh, well, there's not really much point making that guy your general, you won't be using them as battle line. But in the Soulblight Grave Lords, a lot of the dynasties and legions are along the lines of, if we look at the Legion of Blood, uh, Neferata is counted as being a general. She is part of this legion. So you're using her mainly as the general, but why not make another general of a White King just to get you your you know, Grave Guard battle line or Legion of Night or any of the other dynasties if you'd like to. So just bear in mind that. Um, you take them inside units of 10, and that's going to cost you 140 points. So they're not cheap. Uh, they are significantly more expensive than the skeletons. Nearly double their cost, not quite, but nearly double the cost of the skeletons. But they do a lot on the uh, tabletop. And we'll get into that now with our war scroll. So, talking about the description of them, a unit of Grave Guard has any number of models. The unit is armed with one of the following weapon options. A white blades and crypt shields, or great white blades. You have a champion, so one model in this unit can be a champion, we're going to call that. Add one to the attack characteristics of that model's white blades or great white blades. And then you have a standard barrier, which essentially, like we've been going through with this, is going to let you re-roll one to your deathless minion save. Very good. Going on to the musician, um, what that means is that you can always count your charges being a six if you roll less, essentially. So it's always good to have a guaranteed six charge. I know like things if it was instead of plus one to charge, it would help you if you're coming on a board edge and stuff, but outside of that, generally being able to automatically charge six is it's huge. You're never going to fail all those annoying three inch charges and everything else, so that six is good. And then going on to their actual will stats, so they've got a four inch movement, they've got a five plus save, bravery ten, and one wound. And I'm not going to lie to you, we compare that to the Death Rattle Skeletons, and those will stats are exactly the same, but there's a way to improve your save, which we'll get to in a bit. Um, going on to their melee weapons though, this is where they do shine, you have the White Blade, which is a 1 inch range, 2 attacks, freeze and freeze, minus 1 random, 1 damage, and the thing with that White Blade is it used to be freeze and fours, I believe, so just straight up, got better there, and going on to the Great White Blade, we have a 1 inch range, 2 attacks, freeze and 4 to wound, minus 1 rend, but 2 damage, that is really, really quite big, I think before... You had to roll a 6 to wound for it to be 2 damage. I think that's how it worked off the top of my head. Um, but going on to the abilities, and this is where we really sort of go into talking about how good these attacks can be. If the unmodified wound roll for an attack made with a melee weapon by this unit is a 6, uh, the target unit suffers one mortal wound in addition to any normal damage. So that's really quite good because, like we just said, flat out, the attacks got better. And now you're doing those mortal wounds as well, in addition, which is fantastic, which means that it's another way to show that some like Grave Lords can chuck out bucket loads of mortal wounds just throughout the army in general, not relying on certain abilities or spells, etc., or big scary monsters, but you do have terror guys at the end of the day. Um, and then going on to the next ability, which is Crypt Shields, which is add one to save rolls for attacks that target a unit with white blades and a carrying Crypt Shields, which is better than it was before again, because before it was only add one to your save rolls if the enemy didn't have any Ren, which was crap a lot of the time. You found that you almost had a six up save most of the time, etc. Or sometimes a lot of times no save. But this means that with that, you've got a four up save just standard, which is good. And I'm not going to lie to you, that's how all my Grave Guard are built, because back in the day when I was building them, which was quite a while ago, I owned 20, which is not, you know, it's a very modest amount, 20 is not loads, but I built them with shields because I thought back then I wanted to have that survivability, which was lacking a lot in my death army. But now, looking at their stats, if I was building them fresh, I'd go Great Blades, because yeah, it sucks that you've got a 5-up save, but you can always chuck a Mystic Shield on them if you want to make them a 4-up, because let's just say you go Crypt Shields, Four up, then put Mystic Shield on, three up. So you can make them very survival if you'd like to, but uh, let's just say you go with Great Blades, I think they are better, basically, if you build them new. So that gives you a five up save, chuck Mystic Shield on them if you want to, four up save, but those Great Blades with those two attacks, threes and fours, again, let's say, let's put buffs on them like we did with the Skeletons, give them an extra attack from a Vampire Lord, now they're three attacks. Give them Manfred's command ability, 
Now they're adding one to hit and wound rolls, so they're twos and threes. And then give them the ability from the White King to let them re-roll ones to hit. And then give them the parlay attack twice on the um, Van Hell's Dance Macabre ability. Now suddenly, they're making three attacks each, hitting on twos, re-rolling ones, wounding on threes, any sixes to wound are mortal wounds, minus one rend, two damage, and then they're going to do that later on in the combat phase again. So you can see really how Graveguard can be pretty damn good. Again, you can heal them because they're Sumble. Their keywords, just, just go into quickly, Death, Soul, Black, Grave Lords, Death, Rattle, Sumble, Graveguard. You can see how these are particularly good and their points when you go, oh, they're quite a bit more expensive than Death, Rattle, Skeletons. Yeah, you can see why. I really, really do like these guys. They're on 25 minute basis, which is really, really important with the new coherency rules. So it's going to help them get their attacks in. That a lot of people are taking Graveguard, I think, in the sort of like competitive tournament scene. Um, and I really, really do think they are worth it. You can take them in big blocks, I would say. I would even be tempted, again, I don't know, this is exactly the best way to do it if you want to be most competitive you can. But I'll be tempted to take two blocks of 20 of these because that is, again, I get it. That's a bit of a point sink. You're investing into these guys. However, at the end of the day, they're pretty damn good. And that's two threats the enemy's going to deal with. And it didn't really actually cost you too many points. For that available. The only problem with these guys is a little bit well, how I described um, Chaos Chosen I think when I reviewed them is that they have a four inch move and they're very slow. Right but the way how I look at it is they have a four inch move for the guaranteed a six inch charge so that's a, a ten inch move guarantee if you want to but at the end of the day they are slow. There are ways to try and increase their speed in the army but they're not going to be super 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 fast. But at the end of the day, unlike Chosen, like I compare them to, these guys come back when the enemy shoot them. Chosen don't, they stay dead. So I do think that the Grave Guard are there set up as if you want to do a wave system against the enemy, which is, you know, you hit them with your first wave, which could be, I don't know, something like Dire Wolves, just something to bog them down, I think else. They pull out, I don't know, your Blood Knights go in, then they pull out, and then by the time they've put out, your third wave, your Grave Guard, have arrived at the enemy and starting to chop them up. So... I think that's great, and sometimes the enemy may alpha strike you, and if you've got your screens up, hooray! The enemies came to your grave guard, and that 4-inch movement is not going to be a problem. Um, so yeah, I, I really do like grave guard. Uh, the models are a bit dated, but talking from someone who owns these models and doesn't own any of the new Soul Blight Grave Lord stuff, I don't think I own any of it. Um, really nice stuff, but I'm just not really in a buy market at the moment. There's such a big backlog to go through. Um, I think the graveyard are fine. I think if you put them next to the new stuff, like the next to the new skeletons, it'd be like the new skeletons almost look like they should be the graveyard compared to these. But I think graveyards still hold up um, at the end of the day. So yeah, graveyard, really, really good unit. One of the best units in Soulblood Gravelords, I'd say. Great way to do immortal wounds to the enemy, and just great way to be an offensive damage dealing unit, which again is survivable because they are sumble and you can bring them back. And if you want to go crypt shields, you can make their saves pretty good. And to be honest, even if you go Crypt Shields, um, you can make these guys have three attacks, twos to hit, rerunning ones, twos to wound, you know, sixes to wound are going to be doing mortal wounds, minus one rend or one damage. That at the end of the day isn't bad as well. Uh, so yeah, those are the Grave Guard guys. Uh, massive thumbs up for me. Uh, definitely the best thing that we've reviewed for Death Rattle so far. And I'm going to be tempted to say at this point in the army series, probably the best War Scroll we have reviewed for Soul Blight Grave Lords so far in this army series. Admittedly, we're starting from the weakest to the top, but this is a pretty goddamn good unit, to be honest with you guys, and it's going to be something you're going to want to take in your army. Unlike the next unit we're going to look at, I'm going to make a huge, huge point of the lore here because the Warshka review of this is going to be incredibly quick because, well, yeah, it, they're not great, but the narrative, oh, fantastic. Let's go diving into it. So... Black Knights, the ground thunders and shakes beneath the charge of the Black Knights. These undead cavaliers form the shock regiments of the Death Rattle Kingdoms. Mounted atop tireless skeletal steeds, they crash into the foe with terminal velocity of death itself. Sheer momentum and the bone-splintering force of their impact buckle shield walls in moments, while long deathless lances skewer flesh and punch through steel plate. 
Those adversaries who attempt to flee are swiftly rowed down by the Black Knights, who perform such culling duties with the same cold satisfaction a rat catcher would exterminate a nest of scurrying vermin. Black Knights were once landed nobles, for in those ancient kingdoms only they had the wealth necessary to maintain a suitable war steed. Theirs was the honour of riding at the head of their lieges' armies, and many white kings still grant their black knights the right to launch the first charge of battle, a privilege that often does not go down well with the band of allied blood knights. Black knights often retain a noble sense of pride in their status, refusing to dip their lances before one who has not yet earned their respect through conquest. In truth, however, the Black Knights are bound to a single eternal duty like most Death Rattle, and the satisfaction they find in the fury of the charge is forever fleeting. Okay, so I hope you really, really did enjoy that. That's where the enthusiasm and the greatness of the Black Knights really does come to an end. Because unfortunately, despite how amazing they are there, you know, they buckle shield walls, everything else... For some reason, Games Workshop decided not to implement that in their rules because I have no fucking clue. But oh well, they fall prey to the uh, the odd unit in an army that is completely useless. But let's go on with the Black Knights anyway to see what can we do with them. How can I find some sort of loophole they fit well in as I try to do on this channel, like reviewing the entirety of the Beasts of Chaos range. So they're going to be battle line if you take them a Legion of Blood army, and they're going to come in minimum size units of five, and they're going to be 120 points for that. And going on to their stats, which just to clarify, is too many points of them. And going on to their stats, but when I'm sort of like being very negative about these guys, I'm also going to explain why they're bad, not just not review them, which a lot of people would do. But so their War Scroll, we have a description. So, you know, Black Knight has any number of models and is each armed with a Barrow Lance. And just in case I haven't mentioned it in this series yet, when I do read the description, it says any number of models. Bear in mind that as for narrative and open play, which you could do however. So I don't know why they state that. They should say five or more models just to make it more clear but anyway on to the rest of the war scroll so uh, mount this unit has a scheduled steed that attacks with your hooves and teeth and then going on to the champion so one model in this unit um, is hell knight and you add one to the attack characteristics of that model's baron lance and then it has a standard bearer which means that you can reroll one to the deafest minion save, which we mentioned before, and the musician is the same, you can always charge six inches. Going on to their will stats, they have a 12 inch move, a five plus save, a bravery 10, and two wounds. So the best thing there is that 12 inch movement. If anyone says, well, two wounds is good, they're on a bloody horse, so if they didn't have two wounds, what's the point? Um, but a 12 inch range is good. But the problem is though, where we come in, is like direwolves, you know, they're not that much slower. I believe direwolves are what, 10 inches when I review them? movement and they're a hell of a lot cheaper you know you're getting basically 10 of them for the same price of these guys same wound characteristic same save characteristic i believe so you can kind of see where the black knights are really lacking already right we haven't even going to anything else but going on to their meta weapons we have the barrel lance which is two inch range two attacks fours and threes minus no rent which is very annoying and a one damage and then going on to their hooves and teeth attack which is one inch range two attacks fours and fours no rent and one damage which is just like there's barely any difference there. There's an extra range on the lance and there's a plus one to wound on the lance. And other than that, the horse is just as good, right? And then going on to the abilities, and there's only one, which is Deathless Charge. So after this unit makes a charge move, you can pick one enemy unit within one inch of this unit and roll a dice on the two plus that enemy unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. Going on to their keywords, they have Death, Solar, Grave Lords, Death Rattle, Sunball, and Black Knights. So my overall thoughts on these guys and why do I think they're really bad? And that's because 120 points can get you a lot of things in this army. It's 15 points away from a unit of 10 Direwolves. It's 20 points away from a unit of 10 Graveguard. And these guys just don't really have a purpose, in complete honesty with you guys. Essentially, if you look at them as a mortal wound sort of dealing damage unit with their charging on a 2-up D3 mortal wounds, you're doing a lot of mortal wounds in this army anyway. You know, zombies, we've already mentioned, do mortal wounds. Graveguard, we've just talked about, do mortal wounds. And there are many other things in this army that do mortal wounds. So you don't need that mortal wound um, output from these guys. I get it, they're 12-inch moves, so you can get the mortal wounds where you need to. But I'm telling you, 
if you really want to invest in that and you get these guys where you need to do mortal wounds and they don't even roll a two up on their charge, you're just going to ask yourself, what's the point? And you're going to be really, really frustrated. The other thing I'd say about these guys is you could talk about them as a movement, as you know, they're fast moving unit, they get where you need to be, objective grabbing, all that sort of thing. Direwolves, right? And I get it, direwolves are a unit of 10, so it's harder to move around the table. That is a point. But these black knights are going to let you down. And the other thing as well is if you're wondering, like, oh, I want an objective grabbing unit, but, you know, direwolves, there's just too big of a blob to move around the table. Go with your fell bats. Go with the big, scary vampire bats because they're pretty cheap. I know they're not as cheap as Ether Wings, etc. But they're better than black knights for objective grabbing if you just want something to be fast. as They fly as well at the end of the day. Um, a few other, so that's basically if you compare Black Knights to other things, why I don't think they're very good and why I don't think they're worth 120 points. Make them 100 points, I probably still wouldn't think they're that great, but I would consider trying to make them work. Um, the other thing what annoys me about Black Knights is they used to be better. Uh, Black Knights essentially at the start of Age of Sigma weren't very good. Legions and the Gash came out, that's made them the best they've been in Age of Sigma. That meant off the top of my head, guys, because you know from what I'm trying to remember, I believe they were with the Lancers, a two inch range, two attacks, fours and threes, but I believe in the charge, it was a rend on the charge, so they had a minus one rend, and it was two damage. It definitely was two damage, I remember that. Um, so straight away, they used to be better. I don't think there were any more points. I think that again, there were 120 points. Also, the other thing that annoyed me, where have their shields gone? They're still carrying them. Why do they not have a crypt shield save? That really annoys me. And the fact that they didn't put it in the FAQ either means, yet yeah, that they're not giving them a shield save and that's just how they've seen it. Or could mean that they forgot about giving them a shield save a second time around in the FAQ, which, to be honest with them, isn't that bad of like a mistake to make because this war scroll is very forgettable, essentially, is how I'm looking at it. So... To summarise this unit, it essentially got worse from Legion of the Gash. I believe its points didn't go down at all to reflect that. It's lost abilities, it's not good at fighting, it's not more survivable. And then going on to why wouldn't you take the unit, despite all the things it lost, it's also because if you want a fast moving unit, take Direwolves. If you want a bit of a, you know, combat output unit, take Graveguard. But if you're saying, hang on though, Graveguard are really slow, Direwolves are not even that good of a fight. I would argue that Direwolves are pretty much as good as these guys in a fight. But if you were saying that, honestly, spend 75 points more, treat yourself to some Blood Knights, you won't be disappointed. And that's all honesty I have to say to these guys. I would like these guys to maybe not have that 2-inch range and give the 2-inch range to the Blood Knights, just to make the Blood Knights even better. Um, but that's essentially the Black Knights. But I hope I've managed to explain it to you guys a bit better than when I did my review to when all the War Scrolls were leaked a few months back now before this army came out, so quite a while ago now probably. Um, but essentially in that, it was just me being really, really upset and annoyed about Black Knights and just ranting about it and being really salty. And um, I think after doing that video, like a day later, I saw someone had shared my video on Facebook just laughing at my reaction to Black Knights, which to be fair, I still stand by. Don't think they're good. Still very annoyed about it. And um, but I hope I've managed to explain it better in this video. And the reason why I'm annoyed, just to be clear, is because I own 10 of these guys built and painted. I put a lot of time built and um, building and painting them. And uh, I generally really like the models. And I know they're not the newest models and everything, but I really do like the cool undead black knight sort of aesthetic. And it's just a shame that, you know, they're, they're not very good. Again, I will be taking them because I'm mainly playing narratively and stuff, and I think they look cool. Um, and if you do have them, and again, you're playing... You know, not too, you know, you're not playing like competitively against your friends and you're, you're playing in a very relaxed environment, should I say. Just run them as Blood Knights as long as your friends are okay with it. I, I don't see why they, they wouldn't be. And if they're like, no, it's not the real model, that will find a new friend, in my honest opinion. But yeah, those are the Black Knights for me. Um, but I hope I've given them probably the biggest review on YouTube, even in what, the last five, ten minutes I've been talking about them. Silence, you fool! I've had it with your whining and bumbling. So, going on to something a bit better, we are going to move on to the heroes of the Death Rattle. And the first one is going to be something a bit different, as this again is going to be a unique character. It's going to be from Warhammer Quest Curse City. And that, of course, means it's going to be Watch Captain Holgrim. So, during the purge of the city, the treacherous Watch Captain Orklathlin Holgrim was swift to swear himself and his warriors to the wolfish cause. Now in death, he commands the vast legions of skeleton warriors known 
as the Orphan Watch. So, he's going to cost you 80 points for a hero, a leader, and he is unique, so no artifact command trait for him. But 80 points for a, you know, a death hero is not bad. Honestly, like, as we go through this, I know we've looked at um, the Deadwalker zombie hero, basically the Grave Digger guy for the Deadwalkers in the last video. These heroes from um, Ulfram Khan, or Wyman Quest City as it's more commonly known, are pretty good some of them because they are pretty goddamn cheap so it's worth keeping an eye on them and in this case eight points of this guy so what's he going to be like his description is watch captain holgram is a named character as a single model and is armed with a cursed halberd so his will stats is a four inch movement a four plus a bravery 10 and five wounds his many weapons is the cursed halberd which is a two inch range three attacks fours and threes minus one rend and d3 damage you know not the Biggest and best attacks in the world, but 80 points, just bear that in mind, 80 points, 4 up save, you know, this, not bad. Going on to his abilities, so he actually has two, and his first one is going to be, if the unmodified hit roll for an attack made with a cursed halberd is a 6, that attack inflicts one mortal wound on the target in addition to any normal damage, helping out his damage output, because like I say, 80 points, any abilities is just a bonus really at this point. Um, then his command ability though, which is his last ability, is going to be Disciplined Advanced. So you can use this command ability at the start of your movement phase. If you do so, pick up to three friendly skeleton units wholly within 18 inches of this model until the end of that phase. If you declare any of those units will run, do not make a run roll. Instead, add four to the movement characteristics of models in that unit until the end of that phase. So firstly, just to quickly clarify, I'm not really too sure when it says, um, do not make a run roll, if that then means you can charge later, or because it says, when you have declared you're making a run roll, I presume it does mean it counts as them being run, but again, Adam 4, basically rolling a 4 on the dice, is better unless you're going to spend a command point, obviously, to make it an automatic 6. Uh, that 4 is, is good, and picking 3 units to do that, it's just helping them move, and making them move reliable, 8 inches, you know, it's, it's not bad, and I think for uh, this guy, 80 points. I'm going to say he is a bit like the Serpil Guard, where not essential in your list, to be honest, you're probably better spending the points on something else, but not a complete waste of points and could be could be worth it, because bear in mind that this guy is going to give a death aura, obviously, you know, for the death is minion safe, as easy. Keywords being death, soul blood, grave lords, a vehicle, dynasty, death rattle, hero, watch captain, Holgrim. And just something just to quickly mention as well, is what I have been reading to you is the war scrolls I'm getting off the internet. And the one that I've got on the screen for you guys, unfortunately, is the one that came out of Wyvern Quest Curse City. So a little bit of changes there. Basically, instead of the free friendly skeleton units, it's free friendly death rattle units. So not really a difference there. Like there might be something, but not really a difference. And then it's gained Solid like Grave Lords and the Vehicle Dynasty keywords. Um, so apart from that, exactly the same. But this guy, like I say, 80 points. Why not try him? If you do own him, it could definitely be worth a shout because. Really, if he's not worth it, he's only cost you 80 points. It really is quite as simple as that. And he has got a command ability, so he can add to your um, your army as well. He's not just his own little thing like the uh, Rat Prince, etc. Where I'm not really too sure what they add, apart from they just do their own thing, which isn't great. This guy is going to add something to your army, potentially helping you move forward with your skeletons, who aren't very fast, like we mentioned. And again, you could make them run a automatic 6 with a command ability instead of doing this, but if you wanted to make that happen with more than one unit, obviously you can't. So this is the guy you want to do that. So he makes your skeletons faster, 80 points, why not give him a go if you do own him? And if you don't own him, and you don't own one of Quest City, and you don't want to convert one up, you're not really missing too much. Right, now to look at the last two war scrolls we're going to have for the Death Rattles, and these are White Kings. And essentially, we've got one on foot and one on a horse. And the first one we're going to look at is, of course, the one on foot, as the one on the horse is the coolest. I'm going to save that, certainly, to the end. So, a little bit of lore for the White Kings. We have mentioned them a bit in the lore so far in this video, as basically everything we've been talking about serves a White King to some extent, and they don't really mention they serve vampires, weirdly, but they, uh, they definitely do. But that is for another video, and for now, the White Kings. So, in life, the White Kings were conquerors, warlords, and absolute monarchs whose domain stretched across swathes of the realms. Since leaving their mortality behind, little has changed. Clad in gothic armour and tattered finery, these skeletal rulers now hold dominion over death rattle kingdoms, entire nations of living dead. Death, however, has not blunted their hunger 
for conquest and war, and so they marched to battle at the head of vast skeletal armies, those living souls whose lands are invaded by death rattle legions are destined either to be subjugated and enslaved by their new revenant masters or else dispassionately slaughtered and used to reinforce the ranks of the White King's armies. Though a White King's morality may have been dead-ended in centuries since their death, the tactical acumen that once fed their conquest remains as sharp as ever, unburdened by concepts such as doubt and weariness. The death rattle phalanxes react instantly to their lord's commands, prosecuting his will with a relentless and morbid determination. While some white kings, particularly those who ruled over hot-blooded nations in Ashgri, the realm of fire, or Gur, the realm of beasts, relish the chance to cover their bones in fresh gore, many hold back until a final push is needed to turn enemies wavering into a true rout. Only then do they stride forth at the head of their household guard, or lead the charge of mounted barrow knights. Though their armour may be rusted and damaged, the Shaishian sorceries that cling to them allow the White Kings to withstand even the most punishing blows. Their armouries are stocked with ancient blades and lances, bearing dire, vorpal curses, capable of snatching away a living soul, or freezing a warrior's heart, with the merest of scratches. So a nice bit of lore there, so we know exactly who these leaders of these death rattle empires, kingdoms and etc are. They are going to cost you, in the game however, 115 points for one that is not on a horse. So that's not really too bad, he's a leader obviously, unit size 1, 115 points, and he's not unique obviously, so he can take command traits, artifacts etc, and he does unlock certain things as Bastion, like we said, Graveguard. And then going on to his war scroll, his description as a white king is a single model armed with a baleful tomb blade. He has a move of a 4 inch, a 3 plus save, bravery 10 and 5 wounds. That 3 up save is very nice, that's where shield comes into it. I think before this old war scroll said if he has a shield plus 1 to his save characteristic, so it's just taking that word out and just giving him a flat save, so that's cool. Going on to his uh, melee weapons, we've got the baleful tomb blade, which is a 1 inch range, 4 attacks, freeze and freeze, minus 1 ren, d3 damage which is good because I believe before you need to roll a 6 to wound for the damage to go from 1 to D3. So it's nice that it's just flat D3 now. Um, going on to the abilities, we've got the Beheading Strike. So if the unmodified hit roll for an attack made with this model's Baleful Tomb Blade is 6, the target suffers one mortal wound in addition to any normal damage. Again, fishing for 6s there, but not really too much of a problem. But if you do get a few 6s, happy days, extra damage, and it's always nice it's in addition as it would suck if it was a mortal wound and then you wouldn't get the D3 damage, so that is good. That's, like I say, replaced the whole, on a 6 up it would be D3 damage, it's just got that anyway. So, like the Grave Guard and the Skeletons, White Kings generally just got better, unlike the Black Knights. Going on to the Command ability though, that we've already mentioned in this video, we've got Lord of Bones, so you can use this Command ability. Now it says in your hero phase on the book, if you're looking at your Soul Black Grave Wars book, ignore that, the FAQ, the Frequently Asked Questions, has changed it to in the combat phase because Games Workshop is commonly good at doing typos. So if you do do so, use this command ability, pick one friendly death rattle unit wholly within 12 inches of this model. Until the end of that phase, you can reroll hit rolls of one for attacks made with melee weapons by that unit. So as we've already mentioned, rerolling ones to hit is fantastic. It's not that common in Age of Sigma anymore. The whole easy access to reroll ones by will attack has now changed to plus one to hit. As we all know, so that reroll once the hit is very good, especially when we've been looking at things like Graveguard and Death Row Skeletons, where we can easily get them hitting on threes normally, make it hitting on twos easily with all our you know attack and uh, Manfred's command ability, etc. And now with this, they're rerolling once to hit, so you're easily making your guys twos to hit, rerolling ones. Thanks to this guy, haven't got this guy in your army, but you're looking at putting like Nagash in your army, it does the same thing, but. This is very good, obviously only works in your death rattle, but it's just really going to guarantee making your enemy have to make so many save rolls. It uh, really is quite good, and if you are going quite heavy with death rattle, I would definitely recommend taking a White King for this ability. 
Going on to the keywords, we've got Death, Soul Blood, Grave Lords, Death Rattle, Hero, and White King. So for 115 points, I think it's worth it. He is slow, but what he's going to be putting his ability on, his command ability, is going to be on things that are slow anyway, because it's Death Rattle. Um, he's not going to be putting it on, you know, Black Knights or anything. So he will be able to easily keep up, you know, with the Grave Guard and uh, Skeletons and stuff. So, yes, very good. I do like him for 115 points. I do believe he went down 5 points as well, which is always nice to see. And obviously, goes without saying, if you're not taking any sort of death route in your army, don't take this guy because he doesn't really add anything apart from being quite a cheap hero. But for 15 more points, we could have him on a horse. So why would you do that? Number one, it looks awesome. It's, in, it's a really, really, really incredible model. It is for sure one of my favourite models in the Soul Lake Grave Lord release. But unfortunately, it comes in Star Collecting Box, which means you get it, you know, cheaply and all that sort of thing. But you need to get everything else in that box as well. But going on to a little bit of lore, just because make him sound a little bit different than the normal one we read through. So, some white kings take to battle atop ancient skeletal steeds clad in rusted bardin. These death rattle monarchs typically ride at the very forefront of the undead advance, stampeding the enemy into dust and driving their lances into the hearts of the living. And then going back to its rules, so like I say, this guy's going to be 130 points. He's just a leader, a single model, he's not unique or anything. Its War Scroll description is, A White King on Skeletal Steed is a single model, armed with a Tomb Lance, and then mount this model's Skeletal Steed attacks with its hooves and teeth. Going onto its will stats, it's got a 12 inch movement, a 3 plus save, a bravery 10, and 7 wounds. I think just flat out there, paying an extra 15 points, you're getting those 2 wounds, you're getting the movement times 3, aren't you? So, really not bad. And then going on to its melee weapons, we've got the Tomb Lance, which is 2 inch range, 3 attacks, freeze and freeze, minus 1 rend, d3 damage, which I swear is a lot of attack characteristics in this army, but you know, not bad. And then going on to the Hoos and Teeths, we have a 1 inch range, 2 attacks, 4s and 4s, no rend and 1 damage, which I think, you know, his horse should be better than a normal Black Knight horse, I think. Just flat out, it looks a lot cooler, it looks a lot stronger, it should be. We're going on to his abilities, Deathless Charge, which again I think should be better than the normal Black Knight's abilities, because again the horse is bigger. Going on, we've got, um, after this model makes a charge move, you can pick one enemy unit within one inch of this model, and roll a dice on all two up, that enemy unit suffers default wound, so again, like I say, it's the same as the Black Knights, which you think would be a bit cooler, or I'd like it if on the charge, it's D3 damage goes to 3, and then that would just feel fantastic. It would be, I reckon, stronger, and I think that would be really cool, and it would make you want to take this guy. And then going on to the command abilities, it's exactly the same as what we did for the White King of Foot, the whole reroll once the hit, which is good. All it means is that this guy can move around the battlefield a bit more, and that's basically it. Keywords, we've got Death, Soul Blood, Grave Lords, Death Rattle, Hero, White King, White King of Scale of Steed. I know I've blasted through that pretty quickly, but essentially it's the same as the one on foot, but he's on a horse at the end of the day, obviously, who knew? But I would say that he is better than the White King of Foot. Now, largely partly it's because I think this model, like I said, is awesome. And I think the 15 points might be okay because you're getting that mortal wound damage on the charge. I get it, you're not doing mortal wounds with the sword, but more chance of doing it on the charge compared to what the uh, Tomb Blade was anyway, compared to the one on foot. Um, and then the extra two wounds and that 12 inch movement. Like something with seven wounds, a three up save, and then a six up death save before you chuck any all out defense or any Mystic Shield. Is pretty survivable, uh, to be absolutely fair. Again, he's not summable though, remember, so you're not like healing wounds and all that sort of thing on him as easily. But I think for 130 points, I think he's not bad. I don't think he's the best thing in the game for 130 points, but I think he's definitely worth a go because probably quite a few of you who are watching this video, you've bought a Star Collecting Box of Solbert Grave Lords and you've got him in there. Definitely, obviously, build and pay him off and definitely give him a go. I think he could be. Could be good. Um, he's just more expensive than what your White King or Foot's going to be. And at the end of the day, you're probably just using the White King to give your big block of Graveguard, etc. Reroll wants to hit. So choose this as you will. And if you are just doing that, you might as well take the one on Foot. You know, it's cheaper. But if you want to spend the extra points and get some more extra cool stuff, take the White King on Skeletal Steed. It's like I said, model absolutely fantastic. Best model, flat out, in the Death Rattle uh, model range completely. And with that, guys, that brings us to the end of this video. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any more thoughts or anything you think I've missed out or any questions, put that all down below in the comments down below because at the end of the day, we're all going to learn from that and it'll be interesting to hear your thoughts and I'd be happy to try and help you out if you've got any questions. 
And if you do enjoy this video, can I just ask you please to do something really easy and free for me. Just like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and smash that bell button. Free easy clicks, massively go support the channel. And if you're watching this video, you've been watching this video for what, about an hour? Please show appreciation by liking the video. It does its huge job. And like I say, subscribe to the channel is how it grows. By pressing that bell notification, it means you're never going to miss any of my future videos, especially the Soul Black Grave Lord range that I suppose you're enjoying quite a bit at the moment. And if you'd like to support the channel a step further, I have got a Patreon and a YouTube membership. So what does that mean? If you click the join button next to the subscribe button, allow you to become a member here in Asian Gash, we can give anything from just one pound to the channel. Or if you want to support via Patreon, I have got a link to my Patreon top of the description down below. Click on that link and you can give anything from just one dollar a month to the channel. This uh, support gives the channel, be completely honest with you, it doesn't basically make any profit or anything like that. It's not like I'm getting it at the end of the month and go, I'm making so much money from this. No, it's a constant loss I'm making. But what this gives me is being able to justify the amount of time and effort and resources and my own money I put into the channel. And it's just a huge way um, that you guys can say thank you to me, essentially. If you would like to, you know, there's no pressure, but if you could uh, spare a dollar or a pound a month, it would go a huge way to keeping the channel going. And the people who have already done that are on this list here, and we're going to do a massive readout and shout out to these people because they are the reason I can keep all this up and the reason why you're watching me talk now, essentially. Um, so the biggest supporter I've got is going to be Philco. Now, Philco is an absolute gem. He is a vampire on zombie dragon, and he has given a huge amount of support to the channel every month, and he's been doing it for a very long time. So I really do appreciate that, mate. It's a really, really is generous of you, and please keep it up. It never, never, ever goes unnoticed. Thanks for being such a hero. And then my biggest supporters next up are going to be my Morgas, who are going to be Blade Red, the Mortark and the Acropolis, and Edward P. And a special shout out to Gold Swept Dandy, who is a new patron who has decided to support me as a Morgas. Makes a huge difference, mate. Thank you so much for making that decision. But to all my Morgas, as they all give a very, very incredibly generous amount um, to the channel every month, and they massively help me be able to keep it up. So to each four of you, Thank you so much for doing it. It really does make a big difference, so thank you so much. And then on to my vampires. We are going to have Ben C, Rouse 321, David A, Dragoon Nitty, Ronnie H, Darren L, Spare Bear, Christopher H, Northdrop, Nathan F, Andrew G, Tom W, Wiggy Hooty, and Nathan S. And like I always say, you guys are the core that keeps Asian Nagash going, as there's so many of you are giving uh, such a very nice contribution you're giving to keeping the channel up, so... Thank you for being so kind. And then going on to my Necromancers, we've got Jack L, Radiation Riley, AW77, Dice Sagas, Wolf Nick, Michael W, Cranky Wombat, Tom M, Crystal C, Crystal F, James S, Thomas B, Steve T, James T, Patrick F, JJ, R Christopher, Seption, and Sean S. Thank you all so much for allowing me to help get as many people into our amazing hobby, and in particular Warhammer Age Sigma, and helping as many of those people along their Age of Sigma journey. So if anyone could become one of these amazing people by joining my Patreon or joining the Asian Nagash uh, membership here on YouTube, honestly, I'll be over the moon. I love you forever. All of that. And it really does not really just massively helps get the channel going. Like I said, if it wasn't for any of these people, I wouldn't be doing this because I wouldn't have enough justification for putting all this time, effort, money, etc. into this. So if you could do that, that'd be amazing. But if you can't do it, no worries at all. All I do ask though is if you feel like you know someone who would enjoy this video or a group, please share it with them as that is another great way to support the channel and it's free and what that means is that helps get someone in to the age of Nagash community which if I get another subscriber it's another great way to help support the channel so if you could do that that'd be amazing I have also got a discord in the description of this video there's a link to it click on that take it to the Asian Nagash discord where we've got about 350 members it's an amazing community a completely positive purely just based on the hobby we talk all things about news law narrative you know army building list building whatever you name it there's a big community on there about fight the gray hobby motivation so join that if you'd like to you won't regret it and like i say guys if you could smash the like button subscribe button and bell notification i would be massively happy and it would definitely make me be able to sleep easy at night but in all honesty guys i'm just glad you came and checked out this video today i hope you enjoyed it i hope i helped you a bit more of your death rattle stuff um, hopefully you've learned a few things from this if you've got any more questions like I say put it down in the comments down below but until next time guys remember to stay safe stay hygienic and make sure you wear a mask you need to and for god's sake wash your hands this is a death rattle video not an ergo video and then beyond all that more importantly is remember until next time that Nagash is all and all is one in Nagash